going on, guys? Bubba here. Oh, so many requests that I just go live showing how I do like a custom armor, so it's like just about to proceed further with this, and I'm like, nah. I'm gonna throw this live stream on. It's gonna get it done. I don't care who joins or not. But at least I'm gonna try and archive it here on YouTube. doing something just fast and custom I have this good old foam mannequin base here and what I do is I take saran wrap and I put it over top of this and then place my tape and then I just wrap it up with tape really good I pat it down like this as I move along uh, this is probably like eight layers thick of tape just so it has a good form uh, and then what I do is Back here, you see, I haven't really finished this, so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of wrap this up back here. Though back here, you're not really gonna see that much. There's gonna be a giant cape coming down here. So, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea here what goes into this. Uh, this is a good form. It's nothing too crazy. It's just a nice, subtle form. It actually fits my shoulders perfectly, except down here <laughs> I'm a little bigger but you know that's fine I can just extend back here uh, any way I want it if I wanted to wear this but I, I never really build for myself anymore so this I'm just gonna put on the market once I'm finished and whoever wants it there's. so let's go back here I kind of want to wrap up what's happening I take my marker here and there's a few key things now I have taken my razor and I've cut off all the excess tape that was over here just to clean this up to give you guys a better look at what's going on. And it's also how I cut my patterns off of my mannequin base is I use my razor. Uh, and I'll show you that. Uh, I find my center here, but in this mannequin I kind of offset over a little bit bigger. Um, that gives me, because there's going to be some curling and stuff. and. I always just want more space. I can always take it back if I need to. Uh, that's the joy of it. And if I don't have that space, it's not there. I'm just like, eh, eh. So it's better just give yourself a little extra space over here. At least for this mannequin, this is fine. If you have your own body cast, well, you can just do it dead center. That's fine. Um, but with spun, I kind of follow this chest line up here. Uh, so <laughs> there's a lot of squiggles here, but in my eyes, I'm like, okay, that's the line I'm following because I'm like, nah, nah, eh, ah, nah. nah. <laughs> but all of a sudden it kind of forms out. I'm like, oh, okay, so I'm gonna have like a little induction right here. I want some flow in here. So this is gonna contour over that lightly as well. It's gonna have a cool dynamic shape happening here. And this is gonna be an upper level, lower level. And I wanna just work through that. So, um, and I'll show you how, the, we're gonna do like the patterns as well here. So I'm gonna go ahead and transist from cutting these putting them on paper, which I have back here. And this is all stuff. This is gonna be the EVA you can pick up at Harbor Freight. It has the paper that you're gonna, we're gonna use the paper from the EVA packs for our patterns because it's really a one-off. I'm not gonna be making this over and over again. So this is just gonna be one and done. Throw them out. I never really throw them out. I always, I have so many sets of patterns, but they're like cheesy paper. It's nothing like crazy, but they're just like one-offs. Just in case, just in case I wanted to make them again. So going back into here, just gonna doodle up. This is gonna piece that, this is kind of wraps over. This is gonna wrap under it. So when I cut this, I know that this, this panel back here is gonna just lap inside right here. This is, if I wanted to put Velcro in there or something like that, then I could extend and stuff like that and it would be super easy to adapt to anybody. I could even go back here and make like a pattern like this and then very well make this a panel inside here. This panel locks in, so it could could very well lock in, but I'm not really sweating in it. I just, I normally just lock in the, this here. I'll put my seam, put my seam right here. I try to get it when it's over the shoulder. 
but this will be the back section from this point down. Like I said, I'm not really gonna do too much. Just gonna mark off some lines here, what I wanna see happen with her. I'm gonna make a giant shoulder cauldron as well for this armor for both sides, so that'll come a little bit later. I have a, I have a more of a round shape. I'll go ahead and make the, uh, make the patterns off that. So, so I'm ready to go ahead and cut this thing off. I've laid my my lines on um, where I'm going to be making my cuts. I'll point it out. It's going to be this chest piece right here. So this is going to be one item right inside here. I'm going to make my cut across here and up this line right here. Um, as far as why I placed it, this line right here is because it just falls into the gully of this chest before it rises back up. Um, but within this area, this chest actually comes up right here, but I wanted to lower this line down uh, from this mannequin base. So I can kind of play with these lines as far as like if I want this to be more sharp out at this point or, or this line to be up a little bit higher, lower, you know, depending on the character, or the way things are flowing out. So this is going to be more flowing like that. I like that. So. Um, second line is going to be ab to this plate, so I'm going to cut directly down here, and then we're going to have this section and then this section here. Everything gets mirrored over to the other side, so I only worry about this. I don't have to worry about the uh, right side because I want to be symmetrical, so all my patterns. Back here. This is a Cell Games pattern. So the chest, this one I'm not really sweating it too much, but like when it comes to the ab plate, which is, this is pretty close. I'm gonna be slicing this a little bit further out here, but this is basically, I fold a piece of paper like that and take this pattern and then it just mirrors over perfectly, so it's absolutely symmetrical. I couldn't trust myself going left or right. I, that would be impossible, so doing the whole fold, that works really good. You can do the exact same thing with your chest as well, or you can just have one piece of paper like this and do one side or the other, such as that, so. Same with the back, uh, where this would be, this panel, fold it over, mirror it, you got left and right. Symmetrical. Man, it's been, a, it's been a little while since I've got on here doing some live streams. <clears throat> you can catch me on uh, Instagram where I go live all the time. <clears throat> Cause I get a lot of people here commenting just being like, why don't you show how you make it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> as far as YouTube, I've, I've never been like a connoisseur of YouTube. So first off, I'm just gonna find this unique point right here. And I'm gonna bring this. Actually, you know what? Before I move, I wanna stabilize this a little bit better, so stick a little pin in there. That's just gonna help things stay in line there. I shoved pins in to keep my paper from a moving. You don't want to cut like this. You want to give yourself a good angle when you slice. It just helps your direction, especially with having this little guy right here. It helps me control my blade and direction it's going. Go ahead and lock in there. Obviously, I've had too much coffee to drink this morning. Bring this down. There 
go. There is my ab pattern as far as the one side. This will get mirrored over. We'll get to that. Now here, go ahead and just move the chest up for a second. Here I'm going to be cutting this section. Hmm, excuse me, cutting this section right here. So this actually bring up over. Just get a little bit right there. Actually, that looks a little bit better. This is going to get refined once I transition it to paper. Try to puzzle them back together. <laughs> this will all form back into this shape somehow. <laughs> but these are the pieces that I want to focus on. Now, I want to explain some things. I've cut this from here. But what's going to happen when I transition this pattern over to EVA foam? And I want this to overlap here. Um, there are some techniques that I do is I bevel these edges, and once I form out this and it's, it's got some 3D shape to it, it'll come back down and lock into this, overlapping a little bit, but not that much. Um, it does take away from size, so usually when I do my patterns, I extend a little bit, uh, just to know that there is gonna be some tucking in that's gonna happen in certain areas. Or you can go ahead and just make this line go from here. You can basically take and when you cut your foam, pretend like you're not cutting this off and then just add another layer on top of it like this. So I don't know, it depends on where I go with it. I'm pretty spontaneous when I'm doing these custom ones. It's gotta talk back to me. And I like, I like being fast. All right, so another thing, another thing that I need to mention, guys, is I will eventually be taping this, this shape in right here, the white part, back together so that I can go ahead and make my pattern from that for the, uh, the decor that's going to be going over top of there. So let's go to the back section. I'm going to cut this loose. Mannequin is no longer needed. There's a few other things, especially, well, with this one, because it's gonna have a massive cape on it, and we'll be putting his giant cape on this thing. Um, you really have to worry about the way it's buckling together. The back is gonna have, I'll probably use Velcro or some kind of strap or elastic strap system on the back, so it just hucks right to the person no matter what size they are. We will see. All right, so here are my uh, patterns so far. Go ahead and slice this right here.
And this is a really, this is a fast, easy way. And you can pretend this is also a body cast that I created um, off of somebody. So this could be your shape. It's all about drawing out your patterns or what kind of armor you want on that and using that as your canvas and then, you know, just transitioning over to uh, some patterns. So as far as this guy, we'll do the biggest one first to knock out all the real estate. Find a nice little corner for it. Um, what I like to do is so take a piece of foam stick it under this and it helps me pin things down using some large sewing pins. So I just poke it right down. Where's my pin box? Here's my pins. Pins tend to get everywhere around my studio. <laughs> Alright, so I'm happy with that. Go ahead and trace this out. I'm just gonna go ahead and just roughly get it. I'll come back and clean this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace out where I cut this section here, where the section was inside right there. I'm gonna go ahead and still trace this line here. going to layer this. I want my chest to go ahead and have a solid plant right here. And I'll go ahead and make another layer and apply it inside right there. So that's totally cool. But I have this pattern for that layer. Let's see. Marking off some lines where I was wanting my things to flow to. Alright, we're good. Take all the pins off.
So I went to an art show yesterday. It's the art show on the east side of Austin. I saw the dynamic of how they captured yoga poses and other things within the shape. Some of the yoga poses are a simple shape as an off-centered triangle or something like that with the person inside here. And it was just so cool. I loved it. I loved like the shape of all these different things, melodies, pottery, jewelry, all this kinds of stuff. It was really cool. I absolutely love going to art shows. It's very inspiring. Like if you're an artist and you're just like, ah, I need, I need inspiration. Like I want to, and it happens. Every artist, I don't care if you're a writer, if you do this, you're a painter, you need inspiration somehow. It comes from something. So going to art shows, it's a perfect way to get yourself inspired. Finding my lines as I move along here. This is gonna come back. I am refining my work. These are just familiarities. When I go to, I like any kind of line I ever make, I want to always transist back over to it, refine it, change it. Once it hits the foam, things just happen. I can't describe it half the time. I kind of look like, what, what just happened there? Like, no idea. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do some blending here. Some blending's gonna happen. We're gonna have a solid surface, but that solid surface is all of a sudden gonna break into just decayed, boogly boogly stuff all throughout right here. Then it'll be patternized, all dremeling, kind of make it look burnt, eat way. We'll kind of keep this back, and then this pattern will come in solid and throughout here. And then this will have another pattern in here. We'll do something. Something will happen. I don't know what will happen, but it'll talk to me. The art always has to speak back. And then when they made these lines here, as you can see, they are nothing like what you see right there. But I'm just like, ooh, that would look so cool. Just a little more aggressive with that line. I don't know. We'll see. If not, I'll just slice it off. That's the magic of just, you know, just being creative on the fly. There really is no wrong way of doing it. But I just want to get some ideas of here going on. I am going to have to transist this white pattern. So I'll... Hmm. Every, I don't know. We'll see. I might just... Uh, after I cut this, I might just slice this out and throw out the patterns. Cause really, I'll, I'll just make one of these. I'm probably not gonna make two of them, to be honest. I'm not really into that anymore. That's that's kind of a reason, a, a part of me stopping my whole like you know taking orders and stuff. It's like the same thing over and over again. Ugh. As much as I love it, as much as I love it, I'm also just wanting to be more creative. And, or into other things. And so I was never able to do that, being on a constant where's my armor thing going on. You know what I mean? It's like, and I'll finish, I go through, I do so much work getting my armors finished, but it's just a constant. So I had to stop that fun getting through the final ones back here. But boy, oh boy. It's good to be creative. Oh. Am I stopping? Will I never make another one of those 
filthy monkey armors. No, I'm, I'm probably gonna make several more down the road. But, uh... Sorry, I'm like concentrating on like, don't cut the finger off. Patterns cut, we'll do some uh, referral to the mannequin base. In fact, I'll put the mannequin right here. Now we cut this on. here that I had cut out, I keep referring back to, and this guy, this guy here, which is this pattern. Basically, I'm going to cut this from foam. This is going to be a secondary layer I'll bring in and add into this. Uh, and I say that because I want, I want confirmed distance from here to here. So I'm not going to go ahead and use this part of the foam to make that piece because it, I'm gonna lose some, I'm gonna lose some stuff on there. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we make it from this pattern. But we know that our chest is gonna go ahead and land right there. And we're gonna be fine. Might I might do some like cutting and stuff within this area. Uh, let me show you something. Talking about layering, aside from using the foam that's there, I'm gonna use this as an example. This may lay, this may <laughs> lay, this may look like it's very layered and all that fun stuff, but it's actually just one piece of foam. So it's all about taking that piece of foam, cutting it, redynamic the shape, and then redynamic, recut the shape, and then bringing it back together, same as the back here. See, just one piece. Well, it's a little bit of layering, but it's kind of folding it into itself. Now with this back here, I actually extended this pattern I made for this section inside here. I added an, um, about a half inch from the pattern line that I cut from there because I knew I wanted to bring this back over and I was going to be squeezing this together uh, for these panels. Now, this is a flight suit for Batman Beyond as in um, the air intake comes in here, here, here. The wing system expands from here, it just kind of like folds out. So, yeah, that's, that, that's something. This is the last custom one. This is gonna be going out to my buddy Duncan. He picked this up and he's gonna be taking this to a whole new level. I actually might sand this down for him and just give it another coat just so I know it's for my bow. Uh, I am making him some gauntlets as well, so. Bit, you know. That's what we're gonna do with this. You guys know the Wolverine armor as well. That one uh, I mailed out last week. It should be arriving at the client's house soon. Okay, so this pattern, I'm gonna go ahead and just set it right there. You have some more paper to work with right here. Again, this is the paper that comes with the foam. You can use this for patterns. Now, I wouldn't use it over and over and over again, I mean, but one or two times, you're solid. And it's, it's free because it comes with a pack of foam. So utilize that, just don't throw it away. All right, chest piece, I'm gonna be just go ahead and folding left to right. So we just need to make one with that. Now here, here's where a lot of people are like, man, what? you cut that and make it two pieces? I No, I don't do that. I simply take and I, uh, ooh, 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 ooh. I wanna draw a line before I do this. chest plates they give them that little doodad of a chest curve you see right here 
I actually take and uh, draw that line on the back side of the phone, make a Dremel and carve into it a certain degree, and then heat form it and then glue that edge together, and then it makes it, makes it, you know, pop out more. But for this, for this, I just go like that. Just bleh. I'm not gonna sweat poking this one down because it's not really that big. But you can if you want. Do the old, the old wide hand maneuver here. I like over slinging my lines um, when I draw my patterns. That helps me really understand the. As I transist, so I like doing this, like this little overfling here. That helps me know when I do my slices. I just slice, slice. I on foam that helps a lot. Definitely does. So this is the back section. Hold on, right there. We are done with this guy. Now, I would suggest uh, not using a razor cutting this out. <laughs> uh, I suggest using a, a pair of scissors, but for me, I just quickly go along here. Especially scissors, you don't have to worry about snagging anything, but as long as I keep my blade nice and tilted, I'm not gonna hurt the paper too much. chest but what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna use this scrap piece of paper to make our undercut pattern now so what I'm gonna do with this guy is kind of fold it fold it up like this per se Come in like this, very carefully and away from your fingers. Nobody wants to get finger chopped off. All right, there's the magic. So, there's my undercut. I'm gonna go ahead and trace it on here. this on this piece now but you can just cut this part out
here to line this up. Yep. On the back side of my foam, I'll go ahead and just trace this line right here, flip it to the other side, line that point, that point up, and trace this line inside as well. So just knowing that it's roughly about, and I can measure just to double check, yeah, it's about half inch from here to here, inch from there to there, I presume. Okay, so undercut for the back, pieces cut, chest is finished. So we're really going to set this guy aside. I think I am just going to cut the paper apart for his white parts. Alright, what's next? Cut through the abs. That in half. Focus on this front section. Let's start cutting it and getting this guy to get it. Now, let me go ahead and just set these aside. Set this down here. I'm probably going to be cutting some more patterns up. idea of what I'm doing with this, but to be honest, this is kind of freestyling, kind of doing my thing, just knowing from things, that, prior armors that I've built. They definitely would not want to just go ahead and use your, um, like your tape patterns right over to foam because it would not transition well. It would be very, very sloppy. So there we go. I'm happy. That looks good. And again, I'm going to put some lines from here over to here. Uh, as far as where certain things are going, I would like to see them. know where this is going to land. Let's make a pattern for this. We're going to make this section here, this upper layer, because I want to get a solid line where that's going to go. Again, I wouldn't want to use this because it's just, it's messy. And going from one side to the other, I'm just not going to trust it. Get its shape here, we'll lock it down. Because my luck, it'll shift like this or something funny, where this is, isn't gonna shift. It, it's gonna remain flat and stable. So let's go ahead.
myself know where that pattern is to land. doing this right certain points that I like. So I'm just working these patterns down. Same line portions go on one side to the other. It's all about referencing. A lot of it I use for just knowing where things need to set or where I need to sculpt. I'm gonna be doing a lot of sculpting in throughout this area with my Dremel tool, uh, knowing where this panel is going to be setting down or I'd like to see it setting down from one side to the other. So on and so forth. Again, let me go ahead and this I need to replicate from one side or the other.
part of me wants to go ahead and slice that. I'm gonna have to use the patterns to actually make the patterns for this. That's gonna be separate. I'm gonna go ahead and get the chest and abs. Just center. Always good to go ahead and always mark like the exact center of your chest because that's where the middle of this chest needs to line up to that. You don't want your chest off to one side or another. I'm gonna go ahead and put the line straight down the middle of this guy. Alright. Because we're on the abdominals, it's gonna be some more magic happening with that. As far as music, don't ask me. This is Japanese psychedelic. I like throwing on that old 70s weird as shit music. Want to be creative. Think outside the box, put some whack out music on. See what you create. <laughs> Too far out. Go ahead and just put these lines in your own face. Eh? Bing, bing, bing. Studio it comes out every once in a while and just steals stuff. I have like my tool like this, I just like go like that, fall off, disappear. Yeah. That's okay, I got my ginormous ruler here to save the day. Decision. Okay. Okay, so before we slice that front section out, I want to go ahead. Frankenstein this back together. Frankenstein it back together. Yes, yes, yes. Ultra Pano in the butto, but that's okay. I want this exact pattern. This will be easier than 
just retaping an entire thing again. Now do not slice any of my fingers. Whoops.
And there it is. Alrighty, let's break out another piece of paper. Set this aside. We don't need this right now. Map here. Obviously, this is destroyed. <sighs> okay, how to make this pattern. All kinds of paper. Oh dear. Alright, so this, again, let's go ahead and break out a piece of foam. It's because this guy is all screwy. Lock it down. Get the pins out. Of course, this could this could be either way a little bit because you can just noodle it around a little. Okay. And we trace. I'm going to a art book reading. Really excited for that. We just break into uh, it's a French magazine about it's on. I don't even know the name of it, but basically I have to read several pages of this thing and do an essay on the art, and it's remarkable. Um, you want to talk about just kind of opening up your artistic flows? It's such a good. <laughs> That's not focusing right now. Uh, I can't wait for that. There we go. Of course, I'm going to refine that quite a bit. But yeah, we got you. We got you. I know what's going on. No, I don't. I have no idea what's going on. Picky ticky. And I'll be cutting this pattern from this thin foam right here. What's left of it. Uh, this is gonna be the outer layer here. So it's thin enough to where it shows contour and whatnot of a shape. Pretty good. Uh, but you get the extra layer. Nice. I, I probably would not want a spawn be cut on a thicker thicker foam like this because I'm just, it, would look, it would look cool but it was a little too predominant. Probably having two blades here, it's like which one? Cut a little bit, extend it past these points here. It's always better to have too much than none at all. And with this, I could play around a little bit if I really wanted to. I mean, it's all about the general shaping and placement of this. But I like these lines. I'm sticking to them.
going to want this armor to have like a hell forged look to it. Gonna do a lot of HR Geiger patterning in throughout this area. Um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what I want to see happen with this. Nothing like a nice hot cup of coffee on a cold morning. Thanks for joining, guys. A lot of you have been really, really wanting me to do more how-to videos, but you know me, I am Generation X. I don't know anything about editing. I'm not a boomer, right? But I am Generation X, which is pretty much the same thing, I guess. I don't know. I'm just not technical. about this razor here once I'm done using it. Those nice smooth cuts, no fraying, everything is sharp. Very nice, that's what you want. Let me just rearrange this real quick. So I don't keep kicking it. You guys don't appreciate that. <laughs> So this is the Alpha Blade. You can buy this online. You can get it at Home Depot, I believe. But the Alpha Blade, the 18 millimeter is, is awesome. It's just the EVA, EVA, I don't know, if you're an EVA Smith, this is your right hand tool. I mean, it is always by my side. It is cutting, slicing, prying things, you name it. Um, why I particularly love this very much is this steel's really strong. So, as soon as I want to go ahead and sharpen this up and make it razor sharp, I get a sharpener, which is Ethan's sharpener. Thank you, Ethan. <laughs> and I just run it like this, and the thing is just ridiculously sharp. And I've been using this blade. Take a look at that blade. I have used this blade for months been resharpening it and it's just a workhorse. Of course, it's getting to the end, but luckily this guy. Um, and also I use Speed, Speed Blade, which 
another reason I love this is the Blade Runner font. That is so cool. I know it's backwards for you guys, but that is uh, Speed Blade in the Blade Runner font. I was just like, sold, sold. Japanese steel with Blade Runner font. That is my tool. I just, I don't know, just call it out. Keep slicing. Ooh, wow, yeah. As soon as I sharpen that, this is like butter now. Just like butter. That way you don't have to, like, <clears throat> exert yourself because that's when you're gonna mess up and cut yourself really bad. Take your time when you're doing your cuts. Uh, make sure it's, it is slicing like butter. Like just like that, the whole way through. You buy these cheap razors and after four cuts, they're dull. With, with Alpha Japanese steel, there's no worry. I can, I can go through this whole armor literally without cutting, well, sharpening or anything like that. It'd be absolutely fine. Um, but having a little sharpener right hand, right next to you, right hand right next to you. Makes everything so, look, look at that. Sharp, beautiful, clean cuts. Now, when I'm making my cuts, I'm not tilting the blade this way or that way. The blade is always at a 90 degree angle when I'm slicing. Now, when I make my cuts this uh, this direction, I don't want my blade here because it's gonna just rough things up. Go ahead and I tilt my blade down. Usually, see how this, you want this parallel from where you're cutting or a little bit more. Or if you wanna do like a real strong, real long straight cut, I usually extend it out and I just tilt this down and then go into it and pull straight back in and just makes that really nice. Shut up, all right. One more sip of coffee. But really, I, I should be cutting like I have a cup of coffee in here. Like I don't want to be like jamming things around. It's very smooth. part about you know doing a custom armor like this live is just like it could go absolutely wrong this may not fit together the way I want or something could go ahead I'm just like ah so you know as I move along here I'm really just creatively putting my juices together figuring it out but I have a genuine idea of what I want to as a finished product I like to do there is I go like that when I'm going around turns like this it just helps me kind of flow things out <laughs> there we go. I don't know if you can see that kind of like salt obviously that's a little messed up I'm not sweating it because this is gonna be getting like dremeled beyond belief 
I'll, I'll go in here and kind of clean it up. Oh, it looks pretty good. Not too bad. Not too bad. Things I want to make sure I match up very nice. That looks good. Do that. A nice line. All right, cool. Look. Not too bad. I want them roughly the same. But again, with spawn, this is going to be more of an organic looking thing. Um, there we have it, guys. Okay. So I'm going to focus on this front plant panel. Uh, I'll do the back panel later, but you guys get the idea of kind of what's going on here. We'll focus on and, and speed up the process of just go to town on this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set these two aside. This aside. We're going to go ahead and get this chest marked. Go ahead and get our marking pieces. Earlier, earlier as you saw, I was cutting out the patterns here. I made these little pieces here for the the back cut which gets these lines in right here whatever minute section that is um, cha. So let's have a look and see if these chests are equal here this is something I'm particularly gonna want to make sure so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna move over to the belt sander because the chest definitely is something I want Perfect. By the way, if my battery dies, I'm very sorry. I'm just got a warning here. I'm going to go plug this thing in. <laughs> All right, put this little doohickey in there. Good dink. Man. I made this a long time ago. I never made a mold of it. <sighs> now that the Mandalorian's out, I'm just like, maybe I should mold it. Heat it up, do some finishing on it. I don't know. And it's saying armor everywhere. Set that up there so I don't get it covered with stuff. So it's spinning in that direction. Uh, what I like to do is just kind of move it along like this. Whoop.
and that's what we want. Bell sanders are so handy for that. It's definitely been one of those tools I was very happy to see come to a good use. Sometimes you can get tools and they just, you know, what do you do with them? <laughs> So, now that that's fixed. Take this little piece, and we'll line this up right inside here. I'm gonna go ahead and trace that one. Alrighty then. Hmm, let's switch my Dremel bits here. So I have a, a drone bit, as you can see, it's very narrow, comes up to a point like a little Christmas tree. And I have it marked off halfway with my Sharpie so I know where to exactly stop. And I'm digging down in a uh, reverse double. you guys can see that but again once I heat form and get this all shaped out this contour line the way I bring it together is I grab my hands like this and I just have to go like that I don't know. things happen <laughs> kind of a hands-on guy Now, where am I gonna go with all of this?
now. Mark these backs. Oh, they're to the front. So <coughs> oh, hell, dust. God. So I don't get these all mixed up. Make sure I label those. It's going to be be breaking it down into some little pieces. I feel like I'm gonna cut this. I feel like I'm eventually going to be slicing this and making this two sections. But I don't know how quite yet. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I figured it out. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and round these all out and then assemble them back together. Uh, Deforming each one and creating like somewhat realistic abs. And then I'm gonna texture them. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it some like hell warrior lines going up and down here. Some pitting, some burning, and stuff like that. Hell's. He Spawn, Spawn's gonna look pretty rough. Yeah, Spawn's gonna look pretty rough. <clears throat> but I will be breaking this into a few different segments. I'm not gonna be able to get all of this in today. Uh, looks like we're going to 89, 86 minutes now. <laughs> but to give you guys an idea, I think now is a point where I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of a breather. I have some other things I need to get done today. But here we have the beginnings of the spawn armor. I'll have this, I'll probably come up on a live stream a little bit later today, getting into how to bevel all of this and bring it together. Uh, but yeah, there we go. We went from paper, like uh, tape all over this, to paper templates, to foam transition. Uh, and that's, that's how I make my custom armors. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I, I haven't been seeing comments. I don't know if there's any comments on this. Uh, but seriously, you can watch me live. I go live all the time on my Instagram, Cosplay Corp. So please check out at Cosplay Corp. I'm always there just doing my thing. Um, it just sucks because when I go in there and do my live streams, they, only, they tend to disappear after 24 hours. So kind of a bummer. Uh, YouTube here is really the only place I know I can archive my videos and they'll be saved for uh, future pretenses. So I really want to focus on putting some of the aspects of my skill craftsmanship out there here, you know? So anyways, I love you guys. I hope you're doing well. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I read all the comments. I love talking to you guys. You guys are awesome. Um, all the compliments I receive, you, I don't even have words. I, I've been doing this quite a while now. Uh, over five years I've been making foam armors and 
I've enjoyed every moment of it. It's just been such an amazing journey. It's been up, it's been down, it's been a whirlwind. Uh, I don't regret a moment of it. Uh, the reason I do all of this film work is because I'm an artist. I create things. I'm always going to be creating things. Uh, but it's being able to, as a fan of something, uh, to be able to share that fan with somebody else means a lot. When I create something and I, I finish it and I send it out, uh, there's a real joy from hearing back from the client. Uh, their joy and their happiness makes me really happy. So, yeah. Nonetheless, it's, it's been a rough, it's been, I've had my rough parts of the whole process of building armors, you know, uh, armors that don't fit, remaking an entire armor, making that loss from it, it sucks. Uh, but it's always, uh, always making sure that I'm able to sleep at night and I'm not dicking people over. And I'm always replying, if clients come to me, I'm responsive right away. I may not be able to be like, uh, your armor is right up on the table, but I'm always, always, always attentive on responding to people that I'm working with. Um, but yeah, I've, I've tailored armors for people for quite some time. Uh, I'm not doing that anymore. I've moved on to just being able to do this real just off the wall, whatever. I just love being creative. Uh, something very unique, very original, and create that every single week, make a new piece. Uh, that's been wonderful. And I'm getting involved with art groups. And uh, I really like to start getting, I don't know, getting into more art shows. I want to, I don't know, start doing paintings. Uh, but yeah. So anyways, thanks for joining, guys. Hope you're doing well. Until next time, be creative. And like I say, leave those comments below. Ask your questions. I love to answer them. All right, take care, guys.